Ladies and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is from the Critical Drinker. Why modern movies suck. Nobody can stay dead. Y'all remember to subscribe. Let's grow to get our... Benjamin Franklin once famously quipped that there are only two certainties in life. Death and taxes. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. The shocking rise in personal income tax rates over the past 10 years. I'm sorry, what? Oh, come on! Sorry, death. Specifically, death in media. Surely the ultimate and most permanent conclusion to any character's story. The end of everything they are, and everything they ever could be. Everything they might have said and thought. Every task they might have accomplished. Every life they might have touched. It all ends when they draw their final breath. And just like in real life, their passing often leaves behind an aching void of emptiness and grief that other characters, and even the audience themselves, must struggle to come to terms with. At least it used to. Nowadays the death of a major character is treated more like a passing inconvenience that can be easily fixed whenever the plot needs it to happen, or a hack writer wants to jangle some shiny keys in front of the audience for a bit of cheap nostalgia, or the studio decides they want to squeeze a bit more money out of a once popular legacy character. Whatever the reason, it all adds up to the same hey, problem. Nobody stays fucking dead matrix. anymore. And that creates some oh. very obvious additional problems that we'll get into later. Believe that. But for now at least, let's consider some of the most popular and convenient paths for character resurrection. I mean, we'll leave out the absolute chads who just bring people back to life with no explanation whatsoever. Somehow Palpatine returned. Somehow Palpatine returned. Somehow Palpatine returned. Palpatine returned. Uh, Probably the least damaging method is to work more or less within the confines of the fictional world that you've created, usually when you've got highly advanced science and technology to fall back on. It'll definitely stretch the audience's suspension of disbelief, but with luck it can be done without completely breaking your own narrative rules. Like The Matrix Resurrections for example. Remember Neo and Trinity? Remember how they both totally died at the end of Matrix Revolutions yeah, when Trinity took a steel girder to the gut and Neo got assimilated by Agent Smith? Sequel, and then his brain it? exploded or something and he turned into sci-fi space Jesus. I mean, it wasn't high <laughs> art or anything, but it got the job done, I suppose. But what happens when you're a studio Jesus. desperate to squeeze a little more money out of an old franchise, but you desperately need your two main actors to be involved again? Fuck it, let's just say that the machines fixed their bodies up, brought them back to life, and plugged them right back into the Matrix like Makes nothing happened. No sense. Genius. Or how about Colonel Quaritch from Avatar? Remember him? Probably not, because apparently half the world's entire population went to see that movie, but most of them could barely tell you a single thing about it today apart from the blue people were cool and the planet looked nice and that made my brain do a happy. <coughs> but the point here is that Quaritch ultimately got turned into a human pincushion and ended up very dead as a result. But what do you do when it's 15 years later and you need an antagonist for your sequel and you can't be arsed coming up with a new one? Fuck it, let's just say he downloaded his brain into an avatar body off screen, despite the fact that his entire character was driven by his complete and utter contempt for the Navi and he absolutely would never have agreed to such a procedure. And bingo, he's back in the game like nothing happens. <laughs> Fuck off, film. I mean, shit, man, sometimes we don't even need to wait for a sequel. We can just bring characters back to life in the oh, very gosh. next scene. Jeez. Like in Star Trek Into Darkness, when okay. Captain Kirk sacrifices his life to fix the Enterprise warp core moment. by kicking it until it starts working again. He can't be serious. Honestly, if you want a single moment that pretty much exemplifies the attitude of modern Star Trek, then here it is. Anyway, because J.J. Abrams only knows how to repurpose stuff that other people have already done far better, the whole scene is basically trying to mirror the death of Spock in The Wrath of Khan. But whereas that scene was poignantly handled and the audience was given an entire movie to process the grief of his death, and Kirk ultimately had to sacrifice his career, his ship, and even his own son to get Spock back, Into Darkness brings Kirk back to life literally minutes later by injecting him with Dirk Benedict Bundersnatch's magical Superman blood, which can apparently cure just about any disease or ailment up to and including death itself. Damn man, I sure hope they get a sample of that so that they can basically prevent That's any butcher, disease ever, right? instead of just forgetting about are, it the why? moment it's accomplished the one thing that the plot needs it for. Lander, yeah? Fuck. Another variation of the techno jargon bullshit approach is to use oh, the yeah, magical that. bullshit approach instead. Like in Wonder Woman 1984, where Diana uses the magical dildo crystal thing that grants wishes to bring Steve Trevor back from the oh. dead. And for the purposes oh. of this video, we'll just ignore the fact that Steve <laughs> is actually inhabiting the body of a completely innocent bystander who 
who absolutely didn't give permission for any of this stuff to happen to him, and couldn't consent when Diana decides to have sex with him, because I guess stuff like this is morally and ethically fine when a woman does it. Anyway, the goal of the writers was once again to bring back a popular character that had already been killed off, because there's so fucking lacking in anything even resembling imagination that all they could think to do was replicate the relationship dynamic of the previous film, thus making his sacrifice in that movie completely and utterly pointless. Son of a bitch! Another approach, which is possibly the most destructive in terms of its far-reaching plot repercussions, is using time travel and or alternate timelines to bring dead characters back to life. I mean, how many times have the Terminator movies used branching timelines to wheel out an increasingly saggy and decrepit Arnold Schwarzenegger to do his T-800 thing again? A role that he hasn't been able to convincingly play since the 1990s. And each time they do it, they have to ask the audience to conveniently forget whatever happened in the previous films because they've just been overwritten. Terminator Genesis effectively cancelled out Terminator? the events of I didn't even well, <laughs> basically the entire franchise up until that point, whereas Dark know. Fate asked us to pretend that everything after Terminator 2 never actually happened, while trying to replace it with a storyline that was infinitely worse in every possible way. It's a bit like going on a first date that's not really working out, and instead of just leaving, you burn down the entire restaurant and everyone inside it. Or Avengers Endgame, which suddenly threw in a time travel machine that allowed the writers to bring not one, but two major characters back to life, not only making their deaths in the previous movie completely meaningless, but opening the door to much bigger problems like, why don't you use- I'm gonna be honest, it's very difficult to let go of these characters, especially if they're bringing money. So that's why studios, they suffer or struggle with killing off character. Like look at Iron Man and Robert, uh, and you know, um, Captain America, they're dead. And this, they're struggling. Do you see what I mean? So it's hard to like really move on without them. Use a time machine to recruit entire armies of superheroes from different timelines to counter any possible threat you could ever come up against. Why not do this every time someone dies or something goes mildly wrong? Why not go forward in time to procure advanced weapons and technology that can totally help you in the present? Why haven't other people and factions invented time travel as well? Why isn't there a fucking massive universal arms race for such world-shattering technology? Questions like these will simply never end because time travel is the ultimate narrative can of worms. Once you've opened it, there's no logical way to close it again and yep. it's only going to grow until it consumes your entire fictional universe, invalidating nonsense. every plot point and destroying even the illusion of stakes Bro, and consequences. The final me. method is a word that I've come to utterly despise over the past couple of years. A word that's largely responsible for speeding up the downfall of modern superhero movies. A word called multiverses. Oh. <laughs> Basically, it's the writing equivalent of playing a video game in sandbox mode, where you can spawn in any character, situation, location, or item at will. Wanna bring back a dead character played by the same actor, or one from a totally different version of your IP? No problem, just multiverse them into existence, and you barely even have to come up with a justification because who even cares, really? The fans certainly don't, they just want to see different versions of their favourite characters interacting with each other, making jokes and fighting bad guys. It's the movie equivalent of watching a little kid kids smash together their G.I. Joe and He-Man toys. It doesn't really make any sense, but it's entertaining at least from a novelty point of view. I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home at least did a decent job with the concept, mostly because the characters were handled with a hint of respect, there was a compelling emotional core driving things forward, and the movie knew to keep the narrative relatively contained and grounded. The problem is that just like with time oh travel, God, it age, opened the bro. floodgates to so a gigantic tidal wave of shit to flow out into the cinemas. Really Suddenly everyone was jumping on the multiverse bandwagon because it was a uh, fun gimmick and when you're out of actual serious creative ideas gimmicks are basically all you've got left that's why we had michael keaton's batman taking on cgi space aliens in a desert in the middle of the day or doctor strange fighting an evil version of himself with a third eye for some reason or kang and this fucking floating potato threatening to so conquer all of existence it's what happens when one good idea gets hijacked by a bunch of useless hacks desperate to exploit the next big thing before everyone else gives up and moves on. And that, dear viewer, is the fate that awaits so many movies who try this kind of shit, because the obvious result of routinely bringing dead characters back to life with the most flimsy justifications is that nothing that happens carries any weight anymore, because it can all be undone whenever the writers feel like it. Whether it's through some contrived scientific or magical bullshit, alternate timelines overwriting past events or different realities merging together, it all adds up to the same basic problem. Nothing matters anymore, so there's no reason to get invested in 
in any of it. If your favourite character dies, so what? There's no reason to feel bad because they'll probably be back in the sequel. If the villain gets defeated, what difference does it make because they'll return for payback sooner or later? It becomes nothing more than a crutch for writers who can't stand on their own two feet and come up with new original ideas to move a narrative forwards. Because why take a chance on that when you can just bring back recognisable things that were once popular and leech off the success of other people's hard work? The end result is a kind of creative inertia, like a car spinning its wheels in the mud, splattering shit everywhere without actually making any forward progress. Combine this with the over-reliance on sequels, reboots and remakes and we're fast becoming a culture mired in stagnation, recycling inferior copies of old ideas and properties with declining skill and passion. The stories we tell ourselves now have become simple commodities, as disposable and forgettable as a fast food lunch, rather than actual artistic endeavours with something meaningful to say. Hollywood might be able to resurrect any character that they've bought the legal rights to, but the one thing they can't bring back to life is the interest of their own audience. And I think this year they're going to learn that lesson in the hardest way possible. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. As usual, the critical drinker is not wrong in this, but I just got a few things to say, okay? I'm going to be honest, y'all. I'll just let this play on mute. So, for me personally, I do believe that they lack creativity, okay? And again, <coughs> why we have women dancing? You guys should understand that's the serious problem. Like, look right now, Marvel, they killed off their two main characters. That was that was the, you know, that was the, the breadwinner of their franchise. And now look, they're struggling. They're literally struggling. They can't make anything work. Loki will save Marvel? Like, seriously? Are you guys serious? Loki is not a, he's not that guy, right? Ant-Man is not that guy, you know. Doctor Strange would have been the guy, but they really messed him up in Multiverse of Madness. And so he's not the guy anymore. So again, it's a problem, right? Look at Fast and Furious. They keep bringing back characters that were dead in a way to make people go see the film. So it's all about profit, not necessarily where the story is going. Mortal Kombat. You know, I keep bitching about Mortal Kombat because I don't like this timeline, bringing back old characters that died. And now they have this unlimited timelines that like, bro, what is all this, bro? <laughs> this multiverse thing, it should be a one-time thing and that's it. Don't use it to keep going forward. Marvel, they want to explore multiverse, like how many Kangs, like what, what? I don't give a shit. The Kang that died in Ant-Man, I don't care. I literally don't care because there's another Kang in Loki. So what's the point? I'm just saying, man, that's why it's flopping so bad. Because no one cares anymore. It's just the characters that exist in another universe. So who gives a shite? Even the Flash dealt with multiverse. No one cared to see it. Just saying, hey, that's a red flag, right? If you guys enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. We out of here.